Welcome to Turner Classic Movies. I'm your host, Eddie Muller. As you may have figured out by now, we like to mix things up in Noir Alley. The menu is all noir, or close to it, but we try to bring you different derivations of darkness and despair. Top flight A pictures with big name stars, foreign language noirs, and obscure B noirs that have escaped attention over the years. Today, we have a rarity from late in the noir movement, Hellbound, independently produced in 1957. This one is definitely a B. It may even come from somewhere deeper down the alphabet. Hellbound was a production of Bel Air Pictures, formed in the early 50s by a pair of industry veterans, producers Howard W. Koch and Aubrey Skenk. They shepherded a lot of B-movies in every genre, crime, western, jungle sagas, all made on Spartan budgets and all distributed through a deal with United Artists. Whatever kind of picture they made, the blueprint was the same. Make it cheap and fold a few lurid twists into the formula. Hellbound is a prime example. It's a bare bones heist picture, but writers Arthur Orloff and Richard Landau have a few tricks up their sleeves. For starters, they plotted no simple bank job, but the theft of war surplus narcotics from a cargo ship, a complex scheme that involves everything from junkies adrift at sea to induced insulin shock to femme fatales posing as Florence Nightingales. Orloff and Landau had written dozens of B features by this point. Now, Landau, who did the final draft, had started in the business as a story writer, working on a few big projects like 1945's Back to Bataan. But his comfort zone was in the B trenches, writing things like wild weed, hot cars, and blonde bait. He managed to stick enough unexpected off-kilter business in his programmers to keep himself and the audience interested. Hellbound is peppered with odd bits that give routine scenes a kinky twist, and some of the dialogue is so hard-boiled it's obtuse. You may be scratching your head trying to figure out what they're talking about, if it means anything at all. What is it, Paula? Well, if I were that nurse... You'd be sure Mr. Jordan got that package to mail to you, wouldn't you, Harry? Paula, it's like she got two heads on her shoulders. One of them for just thinking. But don't mistake this for amateur hour. There are seasoned pros in the cast and crew that keep Hellbound a few steps up from the bargain basement. Director of photography Carl Guthrie had worked at Warner Brothers, where he shot visually exciting crime pictures like Caged, Storm Warning, and Highway 301. He became a freelancer in the late 50s, shooting stuff like Bop Girl Goes Calypso, Death in Small Doses, and House on Haunted Hill. Like Richard Landau, Guthrie had fun with this one. Whether he's making a beating in a threadbare office into a film noir set piece, or vividly capturing unusual locations around Los Angeles, especially during the picture's exciting climax. The mastermind of the caper is played by John Russell, a Marine war hero turned actor who was a prominent supporting player in the 50s, mostly in westerns and crime pictures. Russell played his share of sneering villains, but here he goes the extra mile, turning in his nastiest performance. Just when you're chuckling at the film's goofy tongue-in-cheek humor, Russell unsheaths a surprisingly savage edge. Counterbalance is offered by young Stuart Whitman, who'd been making films since 1951, but had only started playing credited roles. More on the cast, especially female lead June Blair on the back end. This was the first feature film for director William J. Hole, who'd spend the bulk of the 1960s as a producer-director on the TV series Peyton Place. He, too, has a few tricks up his sleeve, starting with a clever twist on an opening narration very familiar to noir fans. Look, don't expect the Ritz. Today, we're checking into Motel 6. That doesn't mean we can't have fun, especially when it's 1957 and you're hellbound.